in unit three, section three, we're going to look at what we call a two-way selection using an if-else statement. So the word else is a little bit unique in Java in that um, we can't use it by itself. So it has to be used in connection with an if statement. Um, pretty much every other reserved keyword we've seen so far could be used you know, on its own, but this word here, else, can only be used immediately after an if statement. Um, and if used properly, it's pretty easy to understand. When you write an if-else statement, um, exactly one of the two will execute. Okay, So uh, like it says here, one of them will be executed. In case that the if statement is true, you execute the code that belongs to the if statement. If the if statement's false, you automatically run the code of the else. And there's no condition on this, okay? So it's an either or proposition. You can't do both and you can't do neither. So exactly one of these two things is gonna happen. I've got a scanner set up again, so you get to type in a number. Um, we're being prompted to enter in any number from one to 100. So if I type in the number 13, it tells me 13 is less than or equal to 50. Okay, so that was true. And as a result, it printed that the number was less than or equal to 50. But what's equally important to note is that it didn't print this second line. Okay, so if the if statement is true, we automatically skip the else statement and anything connected to it. Um, if I run this again, and I, I'll put in a number that this time is greater than 50, uh, we'll see that just the second print line prints. Okay, um, you can actually connect multiple ifs and else's together and we'll look at that in the future but for today we're just looking at the basic two-way selection and if else statement so this time i typed in 88 um, as a result the if statement saw a false boolean it skipped the print statement attached to the if and it automatically went into the else okay um, if we take a look at this part here i've said to beware of the dangling else Okay, so like I said, the word, the word else is kind of special in that it can only be used in connection uh, to something else. In this case, in this. Please join us in the teacher's lounge. We have um, lunch for you. There's some um, donuts, chips, and sodas, and in and out burgers. Thank you. I don't know if you guys heard that announcement. Okay. <laughs> They're telling me that there's free lunch on campus. All right. So sorry for the interruption. Um, so here's what I mean by a dangling else. Now, this looks like it might be pretty good code. I said, if the number's 13, we're going to say that, you know, the number is less than 50 and that it's my lucky number. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to say that you did not enter 13. Seems reasonable. I'm actually going to get an error message now. So we weren't getting an error message earlier because I had this commented out. But now I've got it commented, uh, uncommented. And it says here that I have an else without an if. Okay, so here's what that means, right? Remember, remember, it doesn't matter that I've indented these two lines of code. Only the line of code that I have highlighted is actually being controlled by that if statement. So therefore, this line of code was going to automatically execute. Now, putting that line of code there disrupted the if-else flow. So the else statement has to begin immediately where the control of the if statement ended. If I got rid of that line, my code would run now because now I've properly linked the if to the else. Okay, so that's one way that I could fix it. If I wanted that behavior that I had before with both print statements, there's a way I could do it. Okay, I would just need to include a brace structure around this block of code like we saw with our ifs. What that would do is that would give control of this entire block to the if statement. So now when the if statement evaluates to false, you would immediately step past that closing brace, pick up, and then you're right on top of the else. So the if statement control has to lead directly to the else. If there's something else happening in the middle, like in this case, my second print statement, we're going to get an error message that says we have an else without an if. Okay. So if we want to see that control structure work this way, then we can brace it. And you can brace an else statement as well, okay? So just like the if, the else statement could have a brace structure of its own, and you could put like as many things in here as you wanted. 
So like I could put in another print statement or two. I could say, uh, you know, I don't know, try again or. And whatever, I, I could put a third print statement, a fourth, a fifth, it doesn't matter. So okay, you're always welcome to use braces. It's just unnecessary if you're only attaching one line of code to the control structure. Okay, but braces, you can use braces even if you only have one line, right? It's just at that point, it's not mandatory. It's only mandatory if you want to connect more than one statement. Uh, so this if else structure has a real significant impact when we're writing return methods. And I, I think you'll, you'll like this. So you might remember the little dilemma we had the other day when we were working with an even or an odd number in a return setting. And uh, originally what we tried to do is we tried to set up an if statement for the even number and we wrote a second if statement for the odd number and we ran into a little issue where it said we were missing our return. So if we take a look at what I'm doing here, I've got a string return method this time and I'm calling it right here. It gives me back a string. I give it the number. This is gonna come back to me as either the string even if it's even, odd if it's odd. And so if we try it right now, let's let's type in a number that's, I don't know, even, doesn't matter. Okay, you can type in an even or an odd number. I'll type in uh, 12, okay? 12 is even, all right? And if I run it again, this time I'll type in 13. And 13 is odd. And if you notice here that I used that else, now, Here's what I'm getting at. If you, if you can think back to last week when we put in a second if statement to, to check, right, if the number was even or odd, we ran into some difficulty. We got an error message that said we were running, uh, you know, with a missing return statement. And you can see that I'm getting that same error message today. So we learned a rule that said you cannot put all of your returns in conditionals. And we talked about how that was kind of silly because we understand as a human that if the remainder after a division by two is not zero and our first if test false, then the second one is guaranteed to test true. Or if the first one tested true, the second one's guaranteed to return false. And it is kind of silly, right? Because, I mean, we, we understand that all the bases are covered, but Java isn't set up to handle that. And that's not how it does it. Java simply evaluates your ifs on the basis that they might be false. So Java looks at this and goes, oh, that might be false. What happens if I get rid of it? Oh, that might be false. What happens if I get rid of it? Oh, well, now there's nothing. Okay, but if we use an if else structure, it's a little different. Now, when Java asks the hypothetical question, what if the if statement is false? Well, think about what that means. If the if statement's false, what are you guaranteed to do? You're guaranteed to run the else. And if the if statement's true, what are you guaranteed to do? Not run the else. So you're guaranteed with a properly structured if else to always give a return. So Java is capable of understanding that one of these two will always return. Thus, it satisfies the missing return dilemma. And now I don't have to worry about it. Now, it is interesting to note that we did this last week, even without the word else there. And that's still an issue because of how return structures work. Uh, oops. <laughs> because of how return structures work in the sense that once a return is made, it shuts the method down. You could technically remove the word else here and still have the same performance like we did the other day. But I think a lot of times when you're writing your own code visually, it might make more sense to you to put the else there. Logically, I think it's going to maybe, you know, make a little bit more sense, but it is not technically needed. Um, I think typically if I was going to write code and put it on a test, I would probably put the word else maybe once or twice on a multiple choice question. I wouldn't or something, but I wouldn't get too stressed over it. 